Hi everyone, my name is Talia and I'm your guide in this Into Music adventure. In this video, we will talk about Soundplant, a music tool, a live performance audio software that turns the computer keyboard into a versatile, low latency, multi-track sample trigger and playable musical instrument. Soundplant is a very interesting resource for music classroom. Let's have a look at it and discover how we can use it in our teaching plans. Soundplant program was developed by Marcel Bloom, a coder, consultant, musician and vinyl archaeologist based in New York. Soundplant can be used as a performance, presentation or installation tool, as a drum pad, as an educational aid to mix together tracks in real time trigger sound effects or background tracks during a show, create music or loops, sketch sound designs, make beats and many other things. It allows the assignment of sound files of any format and length onto virtually all keyboard keys, giving you hours of instantly playing random access audio at your fingertips with no extra hardware needed. Because it's standalone software sampler that uses your own samples to create custom soundboards, Soundplant is an infinitely flexible electronic instrument limited only by the variety of sounds that you can feed it. An easy to use interface provides drag and drop configuration of each key, including options which control the way each sound is triggered along with several lightweight, non-destructive real-time effects. Playing sounds are displayed with a progress bar and track time, and you can even trigger sounds with sound plant hidden while using another program. So, let's hop on the sound plant and find out how to use it. To get started, we're going to download the free sound plant keymap file called Keys of Tron. We are going to first unzip the file to our desktop and load the preset by clicking the second top left button, Open Keymap, and selecting our downloaded Keymap file. As you see, Soundplant is designed to be largely self-explanatory. For the most basic usage, you can just simply drag and drop sound files onto on-screen computer keyboard keys. Pressing any keyboard key will play its assigned sound. And so, we'll double clicking the on-screen key. In the default configuration, hitting Shift plus the same key stops the sound, and hitting Escape stops all playing sounds. You can click any key. To select it and configure its settings in the key configuration panel on the bottom of the screen to have finer control over how sounds are triggered. You can of course save and load .keymap files using the buttons in the global function toolbar along the top of the screen as we did initially. Let's see now how we can configure a key's settings. Press key number 4 to select the key. After selecting a key to configure, the key is highlighted in the on-screen keyboard and the name of the key is displayed in the upper left corner of the key configuration panel. Because this key has already a sound file assigned, a visualization of its waveform is displayed on the bottom. On the top, the file's name, path and sound properties are shown including the bit depth, sampling rate, number of channels, length and file size. The key mode and shift settings mostly affect how Sandplant will respond if the key is pressed or released after the assigned sound has already been triggered and is still playing. It's important to understand that if the key's sound is not yet playing, then pressing the key will always start its sound regardless of which key mode is set. We can change the key mode setting to see the difference when pressing a key. In sustain mode, that is the default mode, if the sound is playing, sound plant will simply trigger another overlapping instance of the sound in the mix. 
in restart mode, if the sound is playing, sound plant will stop the sound and restart it from the beginning. In kill mode, if the sound is playing, sound plant will stop the sound instantaneously. If multiple instances of the sound are playing, then kill will successively stop the most recently triggered instance as it is pressed multiple times. Kill is the default Shift Plus mode, meaning that holding down the Shift key and pressing any key will kill sounds triggered by that key. In Kill Hold mode, pressing and holding starts the sound and releasing stops the sound. Now let's go on and explore the other options. Keep in mind that by dragging the two green arrows on the waveform display you can adjust which part of the sound file will play when you press the relevant key. You're also able to load the same file with multiple sounds in several keys and adjust the selection to fit your needs. This allows you to use the same file without any need to crop it in an external audio editor software. Soundplant is not a synthesizer, plugin, editor or sequencer, but it is way more than a media player. Soundplant was designed to do one thing and do it well, to trigger sounds with maximum speed, efficiency and easy to use. Users love its rock solid stability for live event use, its simple one sound per one key metaphor, which eliminates the usage complications of many other software samplers, its versatility for handling sounds of all types from short effects to full length songs to hours long mixes and its ultra optimized use of the computer keyboard with lowest possible latency, requiring no extra hardware. Go check out our examples and lesson plans for how to integrate sound plant in the classroom on intomusic.info. And don't forget to check out the music basics, music appreciation, and music production tools that we explored here at Into Music. What do you think of sound plant? How would you use it in your classroom? Leave a comment below and exchange with fellow music teachers around Europe. Thank you for watching.